Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn about, governing thickness for MDMT. Our flagship courses are, Master Static Equipment Design, and PVE Light, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scutoid.thinkific.com. So, when we are talking about the material thickness, if it is a single part, there is no problem, right? If it is a only cylinder, then only one thickness. So, there is nothing called governing thickness. Okay? But in actual vessel case, you will not have only single thickness. You will have multiple parts, multiple parts getting welded together. Okay. So, I need to find the governing thickness if multiple parts are getting welded together. And then for those assembly, there will be a governing thickness for different assembly, there will be different governing thickness. Individually, I'll calculate MDMT values. And then whatever is giving me the highest MDMT, highest in sense of temperature value. Okay. So that will become my MDMT for my complete vessel. Got it? Now let us say there is two component, shell and the shin getting welded. Okay. So for shell, I have one thickness. For the shin, I have a different thickness. Okay. So in this case, this the shin might be hemispherical. That is the reason it's not having, you know, uh, the thickness is smaller than the shell. Okay. Now in this case, what do you think will be the governing thickness? So for each material, there will be individual governing thickness. And then for the combination where it is getting welded, smaller shell thickness. See, the governing thickness is the minimum thickness of the two. Will. That is the simple philosophy which you have to follow. And then we will see what where it is getting you know, other concepts. So one concept, if you apply, your life will be much easier. And what is that concept? If there are two parts getting welded of different thickness, your minim the governing thickness will be the minimum thickness of the two welded parts. Okay, Because that will give you the thickness of the weld. Very simple, you know. So the minimum thickness of the two welded parts are the governing thickness for that assembly. Okay, So in this case, TG1 is my TA. TG1 means for this weld, you know, for this assembly, if I'm talking about TB getting connected with TA, what is the governing thickness? TA, because TA is the minimum thickness. Now, if my shell is having a weld also, because most of the cases, you know, unless you are using a seamless pipe as a shell or you are using a 4G, your shell will also have a long seam, right? So that is also having a weld. So, for that shell, your thickness of the shell will be the governing thickness, you know, for that case, TG2. So, what basically we are doing? We are seeing the welds and based on that, we are trying to find our governing thickness. Okay. If there is no weld, code is giving you little exemption, you know, even the thickness is higher, it is telling you to take only the smaller thickness because your weld is equal to the smaller thickness. So you are getting benefit of that if you don't have weld. Okay. If you are having weld, then the same thickness, you know, like in this case, shell having weld, the governing thickness will be equal to the shell thickness. So again, okay, let us, you know, let us see this again. Okay. In the, there are two different scenarios. Okay. Consider this TV, you know, this B part is a pipe. It's a seamless pipe. Okay. And TA is a descent, hemispherical descent. You can also consider it as a, without any seams. Okay. Because even if it, there is seam, uh, TA will be the governing thickness. Okay. But now the, these two parts having different thickness are getting welded. Okay. What will be the 
governing thickness you know, for MDMT calculation for these two parts. Okay. What will be the governing thickness for these two parts? That is what code is trying to define. So what you'll have to see is where there is weld. So here one indicates the first weld. Okay. So in this case, only one weld is there because there are no other welds. So for this one, the minimum thickness is TA, the higher thickness is TB. So code is saying you have to only take minimum thickness of these two welded parts. Okay. So the governing thickness is the minimum one. So you are getting actually exemption by not considering the B because there is not, there is no weld in B. It's a seamless pipe or a forged shell. In that case, governing thickness will be TA. There are no welds in the shell, complete forging. If there is addition, okay, which is also having no weld at all. If you are welding these two together, the minimum thickness of these two will be considered as governing thickness and that governing thickness will start the calculation okay, for these two combinations. There might be other elements welded. No? For that assembly, separate governing thickness will be there. For that weld, any other weld coming, for that there will be se separate governing thickness and separate calculation. Now, the second part of this is, if the shell is not seamless, in this case, the B part, which earlier we considered is a seamless pipe or forging, now it's a typical shell having a long seam. Okay, in that case, now for part number two, because for this also I need to have this, it is uh, in assembly, you know, in, in itself, right? Two parts finally are getting welded. The two parts may be the same part. Okay, so same thickness getting welded. So the same philosophy, even if I apply that minimum thickness of the two welded parts, then also TB, if it is otherwise. If my shell is having lower thickness, descent is having higher thickness. So if your descent is not having any other weld, only the joint of shell and descent is getting welded, then your shell thickness will be of the thickness of the weld, right? In that case, again, your T1 will be the minimum of these two. So the rule is very basic, minimum of the minimum thickness of the welded parts, very simple. Okay, two parts getting welded, the minimum thickness will be your governing thickness. Okay. Now, let us see the other variations. The, that might come for the nozzles, right? Now, let us see this case. There is a nozzle, okay, welded with a shell. So, A here is your shell, C is the nozzle, okay, and B is the pad plate. So now this first weld, the weld indicated in red color, that is bet between which parts? It's between nozzle to shell, isn't it? Between part C and part A. What will be my governing thickness for this combination if I apply the same rule? Governing will be the thinner. There is a weld, two parts are getting welded. So the thinner of the two, parts that getting welded will be your governing thickness. Okay. So first one, it's clear. Now, if we see the second pad also will be welded with the nozzle, right? In this case, again, now I'll compare the thickness TB with thickness TC, whatever is the thinner. That will be my governing for that weld. Third case, the thinner of TA or TB. Okay, because that is the weld between pad and shell. So again, whatever is thinner between A and B, that will be the, so that uh, the minimum of the thickness welded, it's still valid. Okay, so for these combinations also, I can simply apply that. Now, that, that there can be some other variation. Now for this, there is a flange getting welded with a nozzle or it might be a shell. What do you think? TC, because here 
see finally nozzle neck you know, nozzle thickness is what is nozzle thickness nozzle thickness is nothing but nozzle neck okay here we are talking about nozzle flange okay so always remember nozzle thickness means nozzle neck thickness so here actually it may be nozzle neck or the shell if we don't know so the part c which is generally will have your you know, for weld neck flanges definitely in this case c is having the lesser thickness so my governing thickness is tc okay now let us see there is a flat plate okay maybe a closing plate which is having a weld so what will be the governing thickness ta by 4 okay now this plate may be welded or not welded still code is giving you the governing thickness only ta divided by 4 okay. only one fourth of the thickness we have to consider okay here my minimum thickness of two welded parts is not getting applied okay because if there is a weld the minimum thickness which is getting welded is ta okay but in flat head in the tube sheet which may be you know the case here for these code is saying it's only ta by 4 which you have to take as governing thickness okay now this may be not you know, only in this part this may be welded with a lip to a shell okay this may be welded with a lip to a shell so there will be maybe other weld which is coming for the same part which is weld number two for weld number two your governing thickness will be tb okay that we saw in the earlier case which was tc again the same part either it is shell or a nozzle neck so tg2 will be tb okay now for part number a if you are taking that as assembly the greater of tg1 or tg2 will be your governing thickness because part a it's seeing both the welds okay the uh, weld 2 is also there for part a weld 1 is also there for part a so in these two welds the governing thickness is the greater of tg1 or tg2 so tg1 will be ta by 4 tg2 is the thickness of shell or neck so the governing thickness of B is TG2. Okay. So for A, which is having two wells. So the greater of the two wells, that will be the governing thickness for part A. Now, if I have a weld like this, there is no lip. The part is getting directly welded on the thickness. Okay. There is a difference. Earlier, there was a lip. And with that lip, that welding was happening again for a there is no confusion the for a there will be ta by 4 for 2 again thinner of ta or tb that will be your governing thickness okay so for a definitely the greater of the tg1 and tg2 okay now if i have again this kind of weld okay again this same philosophy you can apply see apart from flat head where that thickness is ta by 4 for all the other cases the minimum of the two welded parts that we can take as governing thickness and find the mdmt value for this again if i apply the same funda the thinner so thinner of ta or tc okay for in depth training and to learn more about these courses, register with the link in the description.